For our final storyteller this evening, we have a repeat storyteller's storyteller. Uh, we have Jim Looning. Am I saying this right? Yes, ma'am. Woohoo! Yeah. Throw umlauts over the U, and you too can pronounce things this way. Uh, we will have we have our spinner of yarns coming to the stage. Uh, he comes to us from Team uh, Moto Build, which was built out of the former Moto Guild. Um, and I unfortunately was not around during the Moto Guild years, but I am around during Team Moto Build years, and it makes me very happy. Um, Team Moto Build brings to uh, brings teams of folks to a hands-on experience of building a bike from the ground up, complete with parts, hardware, and instructions. It's like a competitive IKEA project. <laughs> um, if you need some support while pulling together a bike, check out Team Moto Build. Um, hold on, I have a second page. Uno momento. I don't. Everything's all messed up here. Okay, don't worry. I can edit things out. It's fine. Um, Science. <laughs> As I said, uh, this is not his first appearance on a blah 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 stage. Uh, he joined us in April at Shuba's with his tale of rescues. Uh, he told us of a pretty Im 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 incredible story of being rescued from the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, and also fresh after <laughs> yeah. uh, a, one rescue. <laughs> from one rescue to another, uh, we have Jim Mooning here from Team Motoville. Please welcome to the stage our final storyteller this evening. So, pro tip, do not break your collarbone on a motorcycle. Um, so I had this written up, but we're going to uh, we're going to do the year in the life of a fruit fly tonight. So, Team Motoville is a concept that uh, I co-founded with my friend Tony over here. And what that was is, well, let me back up. Let me tell you a little bit more of the story. So, I'm a photographer by trade, and my job is essentially not just taking pictures, but is a problem-solving sort of a career. I'm given this, you know, a... And a cinematographer. You got you. And a drone pilot. But the big thing that w of what I do is solve problems for clients. So there's a hole on a the page, there's a, uh, a screen that needs content, there is a story to be told, there's an image to be captured at a moment in time. I lend my skills as a image capturing person to tell these stories. Um, with Team Moto Build, what we had was an opportunity to take a class that we had done at Moto Guild, which was an eight week class of taking a piece of junk motorcycle from like a barn, which I had, and turn it into a show bike. And this path that that took was about an eight-week course with, I think, about 30 people signing up for it over the course of that eight weeks. But we realized that at the end of it, there was only one person who had done the entire thing. So as we sat there and tried to figure out how we can turn this into something that's a little bit more digestible and like get more people involved with it and more of a, a cohesive you know, piece of architecture with a, a class, uh, the opportunity came up to do a corporate team building event for a uh, software company. And what they want to do is something out of the box, something different, uh, something with motorcycles if we could do that. So we sat around and thought about it for a second and um, I took a couple days, came back to Tony and said, hey, you know, what do we do, how about we take this idea that we had with the bike building it from scratch and winding up with a, uh, a final product. And instead of eight weeks, we do it in four hours. And how do we do that? So we figured out that if you take a 1972 Honda, which I had multiples of, put that on a lift, strip it completely down to an engine, a frame, front forks, front wheel, handlebars, controls, no cables, take the front fender off and they, uh, leave the headlight bucket, you could put that thing back together in four hours with a team of six. So the game for everyone that showed up was six people, 
one person was a team leader, one person, or two people were uh, parts assemblers, and then two people were the people who had to find the parts in the, in the uh, various bins. And it turned into, um, it turned into something that was like really rewarding in the sense that most of the people that came through were software engineers or they were architects or they were in advertising or they were it's something completely not motorcycle related. So we were exposing people and we had hundreds of people come through this over the two years that we were doing it. And it was a way for myself, who I've always had motorcycles. I started riding when I was five. I had my first street bike, uh, it was 1975 CU 750. I bought that six months after going to see the uh, Art of the Motorcycle at um, the Science and Industry Museum. And I saw the 69 CD750 in the, in the display, and I was like, I must have that bike. <laughs> <laughs> it spoke to me on every level, aesthetically, like just the lines of the four and a four pipes, the color, had to have one. And I found one in Bucktown, uh, mint, same bike, but in 1975. So I bought it, and I rode the crap out of it, and that was like my first proper street bike. Prior to that, I had dirt bikes and motocross and all that kind of stuff. Um, growing up in like Northwest Illinois. But the motorcycles had always been, prior to that, were just like an A to B piece of transportation. Never really, I didn't care about them. They were just sort of something that got me around the farm or, or you know, down to see my friends on the gravel road. I could ride them. I was more into BMX and, you know, freestyle racing and things like that. Um, but when that 750 came to me, it threw me down the rabbit hole of vintage motorcycles and like building them and like trying to take the creative aspect of what I did for a living and put it into more of a hobby and create these machines out of mostly Honda 350s. Um, I've built like five or six of them now. Um, and they became my like art pieces. So that became my art form next to what I was doing creatively for a job which actually helped fuel the entire experience of being a creative. So when Team Motobill started to happen, people would come in who were never been exposed to a motorcycle at all. It was like this romantic notion. Um, you could say Ducati to them and be like, oh, Ducati, yeah, Ducati's cool. It's fun to say, it's a sexy word. <laughs> it's Italian, you know? Sounds dangerous. <laughs> Ducati. <laughs> you know, they're, they're beautiful machines. I mean, I've loved the two that I've owned. I've loved them. They're a lot of fun. But anybody who, somebody who's not in the motorcycle world or actually rides is sort of a romantic notion. So we took that energy of like a romantic notion and wanted to encapsulate it into an experience that like a random person could have. You know, to have a motorcycle takes a commitment of time and money. To have an old motorcycle takes a commitment of like trying to figure out how to keep the thing running. Um, a new bike just costs a lot of money. So it's, it's not something that everybody's going to do, and also not everybody should. But everyone has sort of a romantic feeling about a motorcycle. You know, it's a notion, it's a feeling, it's a, it's a visceral experience. So to give that to you know, a 24-year-old software engineer who's like, you know, high on soy line and been like coding for like 39 hours straight. <laughs> Have them come in and be like, walk up to me and be like, what are these? I'm like, well that's a ratchet and that is a you know crescent wrench. They're like, what is that? <laughs> Those are the tools you're going to use to build that thing. And they're just like, oh fuck. <laughs> and when they would go through that, you got like four hours and it, Tony and I would work as coaches and I keep the energy up. We had a whole stick going um, and just kind of pushing people along. And we'd be feeding them like barbecue and beer and just making the whole thing, making the whole experience fun. That was the key. You had to work together, but you were going to have fun. And in the end, you had this thing that would run off of gasoline and you could twist the throttle and it'd make a lot of noise. <laughs> yes. And it would blow your fucking mind. <laughs> And that was the most beautiful thing to see and to share with people. You've got 
somebody who had never even thought about owning or riding or doing anything, and they just built a Honda CB350 in four hours while downing like a bunch of beer. <laughs> <laughs> and they kickstarted it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They would kickstart it. So the way the game worked was this. We'd have the bikes on, on lifts at Moto Guild, and the parts would all be in like bins, and like the smaller hardware would be like a little bit more organized. But we had a manual that you had to follow step by step by step, otherwise you were fucked. And <laughs> of the teams, they would have to select their own like team leader. And this is the person who would call out the steps in the manual. The next couple of people would be the ones who would go through and try to find everything in the bins and the part bins and, and all that. And the last two people were the ones who were slapping everything onto the chassis. So you had to have communication, you had to have explanation, you had to have delegation. So it turned into like a really good exercise for everybody who were coming from like a more of a corporate environment of working together. And then you get that, you know, the Honda 350. It sounds like it sounds, you know, and it just you can like just toss a little bit of gas at it and it will start. But we had them sinking carburetors. We had them putting on a swing arm. We had them putting on a shock. We had them putting on the rear tire. We had them like putting the uh, front brake cables on. We had them like adjusting the different parts of it. It was an amazing thing to see somebody who had really had never had anything to do with a bike have that experience of building something that was so far beyond their ability. And they left with like a fun time. They had been using tools, which that's always good. Um, <laughs> they learned how to work together with their fellow employees, and they have a great story to tell. So it was one of the most like beautiful things that um, I could share, like sharing my passion as a photographer and as a, uh, a motorcycle enthusiast. You know, it's like those ideas and concepts I've learned over the years as uh, as a photographer and executing and bringing people along with, um, let me rephrase that. My job, yes, it's to you know, uh, solve problems of like a hole on a page, but a photo shoot, and I do like advertising stuff, so it's like, a, it's a little bit of a different thing, it's like a, some dumb portrait. But I bring people along, like an entire group of people along, I, I express the idea and the vision for a project, and I have a whole team that I'm bringing along for a ride who I may have never met before, I was dropping, like I was in the Bay Area and I had hired an entire group of people who I'd never met before and we just like hit it hard. Executed the project for the client and you know, brought all these people along for a ride and at the end, satisfied what they needed to do, satisfied the client's needs, and we all had a great time. Applied that exact same formula to building bikes and team building and just motivation and like just bringing the entire uh, experience together for people who had never had any kind of exposure to any of this. So hopefully a few of them bought bikes, <laughs> some started to ride. Either way, everyone had fun. And uh, Seasons, thank you and happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for just making motorcycles accessible to everybody because they really are you know you take a course to learn how to ride you know upright in two wheels in a straight line and how to go over stuff and it's a powerful experience and but learning how to put one together is a whole other ball game as anybody knows who's just even attempted to change the oil on a bike it just it's a simple it seems like a simple thing but you know you really got to pay attention to those youtube videos to make sure you get everything done right <laughs> Give a nice round of applause to Jim Looning.